excellencies, distinguished participants, cities and local governments must be at the forefront of rights-based climate action. The bad news is that cities contribute to over 75% of global CO2 emissions. But the good news is that, given that fact, commitments by cities to tackle climate change can bring about a significant shift at the global level. So the pressure is on all of you. The words of an esteemed judge and ardent environmentalist from my country, William O. Douglas, should be our motto. We need to be bold and adventurous in our thinking in order to survive. With that mission in mind, we are gathered here today to find better solutions to the human rights challenges that climate change poses to cities and to unite our voices in the search for equality, climate justice, and increased resilience. Cities have a crucial potential role as in innovative climate actors, procurers of goods, and as employers. Their actions have a significant impact on the lives of more than the four billion inhabitants that they include, and steps towards sustainable urban planning and procurement, as well as innovation and employment can yield enormous results. Climate change is also a major driver of rural to urban movement. Such movement is an important adaptation strategy for people affected by climate change. But when there isn't adequate planning regarding this movement, we know it can give rise to tensions, place strains on social protection systems, and lead to precarious living situations and informal settlements. Cities have a critical role to play in ensuring the human rights protection of all migrants, including those affected by climate change. Many cities around the world have come to a shared understanding that reducing their carbon footprint is of crucial importance to mitigate climate change. This move is essential as having a safe and stable climate is one element of the right recently recognized by the General Assembly and the Human Rights Council to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment. Several cities have sought to advance equity, justice, and rights through climate action. They've allocated resources for the benefit of those most affected by climate change. For example, Johannesburg in South Africa provides vulnerable residents with water and electricity subsidies that are based on their level of need. They've set clear climate targets that enhance accountability, a key principle for human rights-based climate governance. Another example in Barcelona, Spain has set a climate justice target for reaching zero energy poverty by 2030. And cities of all sizes have taken steps towards ensuring meaningful participation in climate action. Mexico City, for one, is moving forward on that goal by fostering citizen participation in both the creation of the local climate action strategy and in specific mitigation projects. We warmly welcome these efforts, and I'd like to particularly recognize those cities that have embraced their human rights obligations while facing significant financial and other constraints. With those good practices in mind, we urge all cities and local governments to undertake similar steps and more. Indeed, Further action is needed, and I'd like to highlight three areas where concrete steps are required. First, cities should commit to meet the international target of limiting global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Without urgent action, the world will exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius warming within the next decade. And on that, the science is clear. That level of warming will lead to an increase in the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events such as floods, droughts, and storms. Such natural disasters can severely damage and destroy cities' basic services and infrastructure and cause major setbacks in terms of realizing human rights, including access to housing, livelihoods, and health. Second, cities should foster climate change resilience by putting human rights particularly the rights of people in vulnerable situations, at the center of climate policies and actions. We know that those most affected by climate change are often individuals, groups, and peoples in vulnerable situations, including women, children, older persons, indigenous peoples, minorities, migrants, rural workers, persons with disabilities, and the poor. Climate change mitigation, adaptation, and efforts to address loss and damage should take care to enhance equality and avoid discrimination. As a matter of right and of effectiveness, those most affected or likely to be affected should participate in a safe, meaningful, and effective way in relevant decisions and responses. Third, cities should work to increase international cooperation and solidarity among local governments, taking into consideration the disproportionate burden that some localities face. In times of multiple crises, especially the one caused by climate change, several local governments have shown significant support for those in need. 
A strong network of solidarity will help strengthen the resilience of localities and better combat climate change. Many local governments around the globe have increased cooperation among themselves, forming coalitions and networks that are magnifying efforts to address climate change through knowledge sharing, capacity building, and exchange. As a first step towards building more resilient communities and enhancing their power to act, local governments should join existing networks, take stock of ongoing efforts, discuss replicability and scalability of effective practices, and share lessons learned. Today's initiative of the World Human Rights Cities Forum to strengthen these networks and highlight the importance of embedding human rights in climate action is a very welcome step. The UN Human Rights Office stands ready to support local governments in their efforts to address the adverse impacts of climate change through a human rights-based approach. We look forward to strengthening our collaboration with you. Thank you.